today I'm gonna to show you guys three different sublimation ideas for 2023. Hi, I'm Crystal. Welcome to Design Bundle's YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so you don't miss any of our crafting tutorials. Project number one, we are going to sublimate a coffee mug. Now, the question we get all the time when it comes to the Cricut Mug Press is, do you have to use the Cricut Blanks? And the answer is no. So this one here is actually from JP Plus. I'll have it linked down below. You can purchase these from your favorite vendor. You can even get them on Amazon and all of the things, but this one right here, like I said, came from JP Plus, and I'll have it linked down below. We're gonna be using this bundle right here, which is loaded with 132 designs. So these are perfect for the full wrap mugs. And as you can see, there is so many to choose from. There is the tie-dye, you have some animal print, plaid. So in all of these different sections, they have several different ones to choose from. And so we are going to be using the tie-dye one today because I think they are so, so cute. But I'm gonna show you guys how you can even take it a step further when you do those full wrap mugs. Today I'm gonna to be using Canva to show you guys how to customize this a little bit further. So if you guys wanted to just do the full wrap, you could simply just send this straight over to your sublimation printer and it's gonna be good to go. So these are already sized out and ready to go for you. But today I wanted to spruce it up and actually add a monogram. Now, whenever it comes to sublimation, we start out with something that's white or maybe you even have like a pink glitter mug or something like that. Whatever color your mug is or whatever product you're working with, whatever color that um, substrate is, that's what color your monogram is going to be. Now I changed mine to white because there is no sublimation ink in white, which means that the mug here is going to come through. So the white, so we're going to have white sublimation ink. It's going to look like it, but it's technically the mug. So if you want that white to come through, or for example, like I said, if you're working with a silver or a gold mug and you want that to be silver or gold, you would definitely do something just like this keep it white because obviously you can't sublimate white so it's going to keep that background for us now i've created my very own monogram here using our monogram maker if you guys did not know we actually have a free monogram maker that you guys can use so i'm going to show you guys how to use it back over here on designbundles.net no matter what page you are on whether you're on the front page or whether you guys are looking at a design like this all you have to do is scroll all the way to the very bottom of the page and right here where it says resources you guys are going to see where it says monogram maker. So we're gonna click on that and it's gonna take us over to our monogram maker just like this. Now you have several different things you can do. So right here's where we type in our letters. You can choose your font right here so you can go ahead and just go through here and figure out which one you wanna use. So there's several of those to pick from. And then if you wanna add a frame around it, you could definitely do that as well. So there's several frames to choose from. And then you can also even choose a background. So if you want to add your very own background, so kind of like how I have my mug wrap, I could add that background to it as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start to type out. So what I've got here is I'm just going to type out SR for my daughter's initials here, and it's gonna look just like this. This is perfect if you are creating monograms that are gonna go on the back of the car, like a car decal or anything like that. Um, or like I said, it's sprucing something up like a sublimation design. So you can save these in multiple formats, which you'll see in a minute, but I like to save them as an SVG so I can use them in Canva, but I can also use it over in Cricut Design Space, Silhouette Studio and all of the things. All right, so now that we have this here, I can also change my color here. So if I want to, I could go ahead and come in here and change it. So what I can do is I'm just simply gonna drag this all the way over here. I could save it to white, or I can simply leave it as the black because I can change it over here in Canva, which I'm gonna show you guys. So I'm just gonna save it as the black, and then we are gonna go ahead and come right here and click save. So from here, you're gonna name it. So I'm just gonna go SR. I've already saved this once, so I'm gonna put one. And then see what I mean by, you can save it by PNG, SVG. If you guys are working with a, um, Silhouette, you would want to save it as the DXF file. If you wanted to save it in all of the formats, so that way you can use it in any sort of program, all you have to simply do is select all and you're going to get it to save in every single format. So for today, I'm going to use SVG and then we're just simply going to hit download. Now, I always talk about before, like if you use our free resources, you never have to put in your email. For this one, it does. So you can either log in with your Facebook account or you can just simply use your email. Once you have your email in there, 
just simply hit download. Now, as you can see, we're back over here in Canva. I already have these, but I'm gonna show you guys uploading that monogram. So I'm gonna come up here to uploaded files, and then I'm just gonna go to downloads, and I'm going to find that file right here, and I'm gonna click on upload. So once I bring this in, I could click on it here. You're gonna notice that it's gonna come in black, but if you saved it in white, it would already be there. But I wanted to show you that if you saved it in any sort of color, you could still come over here and change that by clicking right up here. I'm gonna select white, and there you have it. After that, you could just simply drag this out, size it out to the size that you want it to be. All right, so now you can see how I've created those. Now with this, you see that I actually have two because I'm gonna have one on each side of the mug. I've tried to move them over just a little bit to where you know I don't have them right up against my handle. I wanna leave a little bit of space where they're gonna be kind of moved over just a little bit. And I almost feel like, I try to like eyeball this in the middle here and know that it's kind of even. So that's just kind of what I'm trying to visually see there. I um, mean, you may have to kind of play around with that to figure that out. But what I did was if you select your design, you can come up here and click this one right here, which is duplicate, and you can have a second one. And then to line that up, what you're gonna do is just kind of get it there and you see that line, hopefully you can see that little hash bar there. Um, that is just showing you that it's perfectly even. So it's not, and then now it is. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one because we've already got two. So how do we save this and get ready to print? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to share. I'm going to go to download and then simply just hit download. Now we are ready to print this. So I'm gonna be using my Sawgrass Smart Folder today that's on my desktop, and all you gotta do is find your file, and then you're just going to drop it into that folder, and it's gonna open up the Sawgrass Print Manager for us. This guy is already sized out for us and ready to go. So all I'm simply gonna do is come over here to my substrate, and I'm going to change it to a ceramic mug. You always wanna make sure you pay attention to that. Everything else is ready to go, and we're going to hit print. Now that we have it all printed out, I'm going to trim it down with my paper trimmer. You could definitely trim it down with a pair of scissors if you'd like, but we're gonna use the paper trimmer. All right, so we are going to simply take our paper trimmer here and just line it up, getting everything nice and straight, and we're just gonna trim off all of that white. You definitely just wanna keep everything nice and straight, and then we're just going to trim it all the way. All right, so we're going to get these pieces out of the way and this guy is good to go. That was super easy to do, trimming this guy down. You just wanna get rid of all of that white border. So now what we're going to do is we are going to clean our coffee mug. You always want to remove any sort of lint or debris. So I'm gonna bring this down so you guys can hopefully see this here. So we're just going to completely clean this guy, making sure that nothing is left behind. All right, so we're good to go there. I've got my heat tape here and we've got our design ready. So what we're gonna be doing is we need to center this up. So I'm going to get our mug here and we are going to figure out the center. So whenever I work with this, I'm gonna take that handle and I'm trying to get it nice and centered there. Even with my design from top to bottom, I'm trying to leave the same amount of border on top and bottom. So I'm just gonna to continue to move that handle until I feel like it is directly in the center. Once you have it centered, I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of this tape here, and we are gonna get one right there in the middle, get another one, and then we're gonna do the same thing with this side. So what I like to do is go ahead and get my tape down on the paper, and then I'm gonna to try to pull it nice and tight because you wanna make sure this is nice and tight all the way around. And so now what I can do is go ahead and get me another piece right here just to kind of run it all the way down on both sides. We're gonna get one there and then we've got one more to go. And there you have it. You should have something that looks about like this. So this guy is ready to go. What I do sometimes with any sort of paper that may be at the top is I'll kind of just bend it like that. So I don't tape mine down. I usually just kind of bend those over just like that. So this guy's ready to go. What I did before I get started working on my design, I go ahead and turn on my mug press. Now, if you have the Cricut mug press, you don't have to set the time or temp or anything. All you do have to do is turn it on. Once it turns green, you are good to go. So all we're gonna do is insert this into our mug press, just like so. Just making sure both of my designs on each side are inside of that. And then we're just gonna close it like that. So the really cool thing about this is there is five lights, which indicates one minute on each light. So you kinda know about how long you have left. So it'll flash, and once it's past that minute, it'll move on to the next one. Once it's good to go, it's gonna give us a beep, and we're gonna open it and check it out. 
So we've got our vape, we are ready to go. So what we're gonna simply do is pop this guy open. Now with the mug press, whether it is a Cricut mug press or a more industrial style, your handle is not inside. Now if your handle's inside, you definitely don't wanna touch it, but the handle is actually cool to the touch, but you definitely may want to invest yourself in some heat gloves and pull that guy out. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull this out and just set it on my Cricut pad to cool itself down. You just wanna put it somewhere where it's heat resistant because this guy is around 400 degrees. So you could definitely let it set there and cool down, which is going to sublimate for a few more minutes because it's still at that high heat. But what I like to do is just go ahead and start working with it. So you just wanna be super careful once again you may want to use your heat gloves so definitely do whatever you're most comfortable with you want to take the safest route so I'm gonna go ahead and carefully grab my handle here because it's cool to the touch and then I'm just going to grab my tape and start to remove that so you just want to be careful so you don't get any sort of ghosting because your cup while it's at that high heat it can still sublimate and shift and there you have it I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how cool that is we are going to pull off the other side and there you guys have it how cool is that and I I think the placement of the monogram came out absolutely perfect so you can see the middle there and it's gonna go on both sides so no matter which way I'm holding this guy um, whether I'm holding it in my left or my right it's going to you can see it right now you could definitely just do one side if you want to and the other thing that's really cool with these designs is you don't have to do anything to them but like I said to spruce them up even further or personalize them if you will is by adding that monogram which is also free it's completely free to go with this file so for a dollar you're gonna get all of those files what was it over a hundred and something files and then you can make your monogram for free so you guys can definitely apply adhesive vinyl if you wanted to using your Cricut or Silhouette or you can use it with the sublimation just like so now you guys let me know in the comments below if you guys have learned a new hack when it comes to sublimation by combining two designs together or possibly even using the monogram maker I'm so excited for project number two. We are going to be making some really fun earrings. So once again, I got these from JP Plus. You guys can get these in bundles. So I've got several of those here. You guys can also even turn these into necklaces if you want to, but you can sublimate on both sides. And it includes all of the earring hardware that you're going to need. So we are gonna be sublimating on these, which I'm super excited because you guys know that I love earrings and I've been trying to switch it up here. So I've actually have some other stuff that I'm gonna go back and make with some of these guys so stay tuned but today with one of our files which is right here we normally make our door hangers right so this is a great bundle that has 30 SVGs but what you may not know and a question I get all the time is number one you can use an SVG as a PNG and number two these files right here actually include the PNG. So if you actually scroll through here, right here, this page lets you know that all of the files are included. So you also have PNG, which means you can use it with sublimation as well. But you don't have to have a PNG to use it with sublimation. You can still use an SVG. So all of the time I get questions about our SVG files, whether you can use those to sublimate or not. And yes, you definitely can. So I'm gonna be showing you guys that today. And I'm showing you guys a way to actually think outside of the box when it comes to some of these files. Don't just think about these wood signs like this. There is so much more that you guys can actually make with these files. If you make a wood sign, great. If you put them on a coffee mug, great. If you add them on earrings like I'm doing today, great. You're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck. So just to kind of show you guys here a little bit, you could definitely use them as an SVG and get your adhesive vinyl there, create your really fun door hanger. Um, there's some files in here that you would probably wanna avoid when it comes to the earrings, which would probably be the ones that say welcome but everything else is fair game there's so so many cute ones here like I really love the glasses right here all of these God bless America ones are so cute the USA home of the brave so so many of these guys to check out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna head on over to Canva so we can customize these and get ready to sublimate now that we're over here in Canva I've just simply got a blank canvas here so start out with whatever you want to what we need to do is make those circles when we size them down to our earrings which we'll get to but let's go ahead and start with uploading our files so we're gonna go right back over here to upload files and then we are going to find our designs so we're gonna go over here to our patriotic round signs 
license. Now I ended up downloading just the SVG version, but when you go to download this, it actually gives you the option to download all the other files as well. Now for today, I'm actually gonna use this one right here, this USA file, and then we're simply going to hit upload. All right, so now that our file is uploaded, we're just simply going to click it and it's gonna add it to the canvas for us. So here's our design. So all we simply need to do is size this out. So we're gonna go ahead and take our tape measure, unless you already know the dimensions of these. Usually when you purchase it online, they're gonna say two, three inches. So we're gonna take our tape measure here and see what we have. So these are about um, a little bit more than one and a quarter. I wanna say almost one and a half inches. I feel like if I did one and a half, it would actually be perfect. It would give me enough of that bleed line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna size this guy down to one and a half. So we're just going to bring this guy down. And, and I'm actually gonna do about 1.6 because I do have that little bit of a white border all the way around. Now, depending on if you're wanting to do both sides of this, you're gonna wanna duplicate this four times. Or you could definitely do an opposite side on here. You could do one of the other designs. For me today, I am simply gonna go ahead and just do the one side. So I just need to duplicate this one more time. So you, hopefully you can see that. You're just simply gonna have your design and to duplicate it is right here and it's gonna do that. If I to do it two more times, I would just simply do it like so. And I may actually go ahead and print all four because who knows, I may change my mind later. So just like that, these guys are ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to share and then we're gonna hit download and just simply download our file. Just like we did last time, we are going to find that file, drop it in the Sawgrass Smart folder, and it's gonna pop open the print manager. Now, what we need to do is we need to find what we're working with here. So if you actually come over to your substrate, we can either choose polyester or we could choose the MDF board. So we definitely have, it seems like wood is in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose a polyester coating because that's what we've got right here. And we're ready. So I'm just simply gonna go ahead and hit print. All right, so now that we've printed that out, I'll kind of bring those up so you guys can see them a little bit better. They are so cute and they are perfectly ready to go. We can always double check ourselves by just lining these up just like so. So you wanna have a border all the way around. If not, you're gonna risk, you know, sublimating over a little bit and having a little bit of white showing. So it's always good to have that little bit of a bleed line um, whenever it comes to sublimation. You just wanna be careful because where we have that USA, we definitely wanna make sure we're keeping that inside of the circle. So we're simply just gonna go ahead and take a pair of scissors. We're gonna trim this guy down. I don't need this big of a thing there, but we can actually use this as a cover sheet. So it works out there for us. And then we'll do the same thing with this side. So we're just gonna cut it down. And once again, that could actually become the cover sheet or maybe even an extra barrier on the back side when it comes to your lower platen here. So today for our supplies, we've got our little sublimation earrings here. We've got the hardware. You want a pair of jewelry pliers, which you can grab locally at your local craft store, um, or you can grab them online. I'm gonna have the link down below for everything that I'm using today. So I've got my jewelry pliers here. I'm using my Cricut 10 by 12, which is really, really big for this, but that's what I have out just to show you. You can still use that with your small projects. And I've got a Cricut heat pad. I've got it 400 degrees for 60 seconds. You can definitely use your bigger heat press and you can even use like the nine by nine. Now, the one thing is people ask all the time too, is those little smaller, like the Cricut mini press, it does not get to a high enough heat to sublimate. So you definitely wanna use your bigger crickets. All right, so here we go. So what we're gonna do is you wanna make sure, number one, a lot of times with things like this, there is a plastic coating on it. So to test that, you could just take a fingernail or you could take your weeding tool. So for example, for this one, there is no coating, but always check it because usually there is. The next thing that you wanna do is take a clean cloth and you wanna clean off your, um, where you're gonna be sublimating to make sure there is no oil or debris. And we're just gonna get that out there. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna lay these face down. I wanna make sure that they're in the correct direction. I'm making sure that hole is upwards. So that way we are gonna be having our earrings in the correct direction. So we're gonna get this one here. I'm gonna start with one at a time. We're gonna take our heat tape. I'm gonna get me a long enough piece here that is gonna go all the way across to hold this guy down. So we're gonna get this here and just simply tape. Then we're gonna get another one. All right. And we're gonna make sure we're using the side that's clean, getting that hole straight up, lining it up. And then we are gonna pop down our tape. 
just like so. Now if I need to, I could definitely go back and add a little bit more tape if I feel like I've messed up there. Now for me, for my cover sheet today, we're just simply going to use this piece of paper that we had extra. Now you could definitely say, for example, if I was doing this for a small business, I could line this guy up on the sheet because I can throw these in a drawer and when it's time to make them, I already have them. Sublimation prints last a very long time. I've used sublimation prints that's been in the drawer a year and a half, two years, and they work. So you could definitely print these ahead of time, have them in your little area ready to sublimate, but you can get so many of these guys on one sheet. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna use this guy. This is gonna be the bottom here. So we're gonna do that. And then what we wanna do is still cover this with another one. So we can either use the other piece of paper or definitely use a parchment because I wanna cover this in case any sort of ink does decide to come through. All right, so we are gonna take our press here. I wanna make sure that I'm keeping nice, even pressure. So I put these in the middle so that way I can push my hands straight down, giving nice pressure. So if I'm not even or I'm tilting it this way or that way, I may get what's called a ghosting or a faded out look to where it's gonna not be all the way around. So I'm giving it nice pressure right here in the middle, trying to keep it nice and even. So I'm gonna do that 400 degrees for 60 seconds. All right, so we're getting down to our last few seconds. There we go. We wanna be nice and careful, that way we don't shift anything. If you shift at all, that's where you're gonna get what's called ghosting. So if you guys are new to sublimation and you're like, what is ghosting? You're gonna get a double image. Um, so we definitely wanna avoid that. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to just take my little tweezers here and you definitely want to use some heat resistant gloves at this point because we're really gonna have our hands on these and once again, they're around 400 degrees. So we're just going to pop on our gloves really fast. I have these linked down below. These are actually We Are Memory Keepers, but Amazon has the same ones. I think they're pink, and you guys can usually even get those with your tape dispensers or some of your tape. So what we're gonna do is we are going to quickly and swiftly peel that up, and that looks amazing. So here is our first one, so you guys can see that there. It came out amazing. Have you guys ever thought of doing this? Have you ever thought of using your wood round signs that was made for SVGs for your earrings? So don't just look at the example photo. Think outside of the box when it comes to designs, especially when it comes to our dollar event, to get all of these for a buck, you can't beat it. And you can use them in so many different ways. I can use these on car coasters. I can use these on round coasters. I can use these on a coffee mug in the middle of a design if I wanted to. I can use them on pillowcases, all sorts of things, whether it is sublimation or whether it is gonna be adhesive vinyl or even HTV. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring these guys up here so you guys can see them. So cute, these are gonna be a perfect pair of earrings to wear um, for this 4th of July. It's so, so cute. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attempt to sublimate the other side. So let's do it again. So this time I need to get rid of these. These guys are ruined. So I'm actually gonna bring in some parchment paper. We're using parchment paper, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a taco. So we're actually gonna be able to slide these right inside. So there is our little taco there. So we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna take our design here and we wanna make sure we have them in the correct direction. So we're gonna put that face up. We're gonna take this now. We wanna make sure once again that we clean the other side. And we are going to be putting these right here. You guys are gonna see me rocking these. We are definitely wearing these this 4th of July or even in July and June's videos. So stay tuned. I will be rocking these on the channel. And then when people ask, where did you get these? I'm gonna refer them right back over here. All right, so here we go. So we are going to line this up, making sure everything's face up. I'm gonna do the same thing. Get me two bigger pieces of tape. I want a little excess there. All right, and then we are very carefully going to get this like that. All right, oop, see I shifted this guy, so I wanna be real careful. I'm gonna go back and adjust it. All right, always slow down if you need to. Perfect, I feel like this guy got shifted down a little bit. I'm like, see, mm -mm. I'm like, we are not committing to that. I'm gonna pick it up. Get the top and the bottom. All right, so we're happy with that, perfect. Now what we're gonna do, we have it, we need it this way because we're now sublimating this side. We're gonna fold our little taco. We're gonna get it in the middle once again. So we're gonna take our heat press, same thing. So I'm, I've got it in the middle. I'm gonna give it that nice, even pressure for another 60 seconds. All right, so we are down to our last few seconds. Here we go. Very carefully lifting up. Once again, we don't wanna cause any sort of ghosting. 
It's still hot right now and active. So we are going to carefully flip this. I'm gonna go ahead and get my gloves on first. We're gonna get these guys ready. And whenever it comes to these two, they, they don't take long to cool down, honestly. Once you get everything off of them, it doesn't take no time. We're gonna carefully flip it and quickly, in one swift motion, lift those up. So I've got one and two, so that way we don't have any ghosting. I'm gonna peel off that tape very carefully. I'm do the same thing with this one, nice and easy. And then now I'm gonna show you guys the opposite side. There you guys have it, same thing, so cute. Let me show you guys front and back. So your biggest thing is just making sure that you have them in the correct direction where that hole is. So cute. I am so excited for this one. All right, so I'm gonna let these cool down for just a second, clean this area up, and we're gonna be ready to put together our earrings. All right, so while these are cooling down, let's go ahead and get our hardware ready to go. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab us two of our earring pieces. And they've already got the hooks attached to those, the little jump rings, if you will. And then we've got two of these little pieces here that's gonna go on that wood because it's so thick. Um, that way the jump rings can then attach to that. So we're gonna get two of those as well. Now, once again, when you guys purchase these earrings, the, the hardware will be included. So you should have some pieces that look about like this. We're gonna start off with these little guys. Hopefully you guys can pick that up. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to pull these guys apart. I'm gonna go ahead and get my pliers in there just like this and just kind of carefully pull those apart. I just need it enough to where I'm gonna be able to get it on here like this and then I'm just gonna squeeze it tight. I honestly could do that with my fingers, but if you need to double secure yourself, you can go ahead and tap it a little bit with your jewelry pliers. So we've got that, so let's go ahead and do the other one. And then we're gonna go ahead and add these. Now for the jump ring that is included on here, so hopefully you guys can pick that up. There's a little jump ring, which you guys, if you've been following me for a while, we have made earrings, we have made uh, acrylic keychains. What you wanna do when it comes to your jump rings is you don't want to spread them apart like this. You can actually weaken that jump ring. You want to turn them like this. Now, when I make my acrylic keychains, the jump rings that I actually get are already open like that for us. So with this, you're just gonna hold one side and you're going to twist it. I'm gonna try to see if I can do this. I'm gonna twist it in one direction. And sometimes it helps to have two pliers. Um, so you're going to have it twisted about like this. Hopefully you guys can pick that up. And so now we're going to feed that through just like that. And then we're gonna close it. And just like that, we have a really fun earring, which I'm fixing to put on to show you all. So let me go ahead and get the last one. And you honestly don't need to open it up as much as I did a while ago. It's very little. You just need to open it enough to get it on there. And then we're gonna squeeze it shut. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna quickly swap these out and we'll be right back. And there you guys have it. Hopefully you guys can pick those up from that far away. But these are so much fun. Imagine so many different possibilities, so many different ideas. Um, there's so many different designs, like the Easter ones, but even things like this. Once again, think outside of the box when it comes to purchasing these. You don't want to miss out on a design thinking, oh, I can only make signs. Whether it is a part of our dollar event or whether it is an everyday um, design that you may see and you may love. Like for example, if you have a Highland cow you wanna throw on here, you guys know that I'm obsessed with my donut earrings. You guys have probably seen those quite a bit. So I'm thinking right now, I'm gonna go find some donut designs because I'm gonna be making my own donuts. <laughs> I absolutely love this project. It was a ton of fun. You guys let me know in the comments below if you guys are gonna start making some earrings just like this. For our last project, let's sublimate a pillowcase. So I've got a pillowcase here. These are actually made for sublimation. And then we have a pillowcase ready to go. Now, if you don't have a pillowcase that was made for sublimation, you can definitely still accomplish this using Caesar Easy Subly, which is a printable vinyl made for sublimation. So you can do that. You can do the DTF pack. If you guys have not seen that, definitely make sure you check out that video. I'll link it up above. But today we are gonna sublimate a pillow. I've got a pillowcase here, once again, that was made for sublimation sublimation and I've got a pillow form. I grabbed mine in the two pack from um, Walmart. I'll have everything I'm using today linked down below.
For our remaining supplies for this, you're gonna need a lint roller to remove any sort of lint or debris from your pillowcase. You're gonna want your heat press of some sort. Today, I'm using the 10 by 12. You could definitely use a bigger heat press. You could even get away with a Cricut 9 by 9 and press it a couple times if you wanted to. So this is a bigger pillowcase, around 18 inches or so. So I'm actually gonna show you guys a little bit of the hack too when it comes to using my Sawgrass SG500 and making those designs a little bit bigger. You're gonna also need a piece of parchment paper or butcher paper, even copy paper will work, as well as some heat tape. For this project, we're gonna be using these designs right here, so you guys can definitely snag these as well. So you guys can see here are so many cute ones. Throw them on a coffee mug, throw them on a t-shirt, sweatshirt, there's just so many different things that you can do with these ones as well. So same thing, you can use these in sublimation, you can use them with your Caesar Easy Subly, you could do the DTF hack. Once again, if you guys have not checked that out, make sure you definitely do. It's a really cool way of getting away with sublimating on things that are not polyester. Um, so you don't wanna miss that one if you haven't already seen it. But lots and lots of different things you can do. Kiddos t-shirts, dresses, you name it, there's so many different things. But today, we're gonna be making a pillowcase. So as you guys can see here, I've already printed this out in an eight and a half by 11, but if you notice, I gotta put this on here. It's not the biggest design. So I can actually probably get away with making these carrots, let's see here. Maybe if I got away with making these carrots about 10 inches high each, would be pretty good, even if I did, I would say 10 inches high each, which will fit on my eight and a half by 11. How can we do that? So we would actually print it out three individual, three different times, and that's going to allow you to get bigger prints with your Sawgrass SG500. So let me show you how. So back over here in Canva, I've already uploaded and brought my design in here. So one thing I wanna show you when it comes to bringing in your own designs, you may notice sometimes that you have this big white border. When I first started using Canva and doing some sublimation, I was ignoring all of this excess space. So when I went to size this out, which if you grab a corner, you're gonna see that little black box, which will give us our, um, our measurements. This is going, including that border. This is not just the design. I never was thinking, I don't even know what the heck I was thinking, but I've been there too, okay? It's totally fine. But what you need to do is, you see these little bars right here? These allow you to get rid of that white space. So you can bring these in as close as you can, and that's what I do. I bring them in before I touch my design. Because any remaining little bit that I'm even leaving, this is including, this is counting into my design, but I really try to get it as close as I can without cutting into my design. So I'm pretty happy with this. I may bring it in just a smidge more. You just wanna look at it and make sure you're not cutting anything off. So now when I go to size this out, you can see here that it is sizing the entire design and not any of that white remaining. So there's another little tip for you guys. So what you can do is if you wanna print this out on that eight and a half by 11, is you can just simply drag this guy as big as you possibly can, all right? So you're gonna do that without cutting it off. Now remember when you go to print this that it's always gonna have that little bit of a white border around. So make sure you don't make it too big so to where it's gonna cut any of that off. So I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit more. Now to center this on my page, so that way when I go to sublimate this, it's perfectly centered, there is these hash bars. So you can see that I'm perfectly centered in this direction, but if I bring it over, now I've got a cross like so. So this is perfectly centered. So if I went to print this, I'm gonna have a perfect design just like this. So what we're going to do is if we want to make this even bigger, we are going to continue to size this out. So what I want to do is I am going to continue to just kind of drag it out here and I'm actually going to start to rotate. Whenever you go to rotate, you should be looking for a little spot like this so you can rotate it 90 degrees just like this. So now what I'm going to do as I start to expand this out and I can see that height there, see where my the height, which has the little H there, is at 10. I can bring this back to about, you know, something like that. It's about 10, perfect. I just wanna make sure that we're not cutting anything off. Let's see, I can actually get two carrots, possibly, yes. I can get two carrots, it looks like, on one sheet. Now you may look at this and think, perfect. I can actually get two carrots on one sheet. I'm not gonna be able to get away with that because once again, when I go to print this, it's going to leave that little bit of a white border all the way around and so it's actually going to cut off some of this design. So I don't wanna do that unless I size this guy down just a little bit more. If I did, so let's say we came in and did them about 9.5 high, I can look at this and say, yeah, you know what? 
it is gonna be all right. So if I wanted to do this and I wanted to do a 9.5, let's go back over here and let's try to look at that. So let's say I was doing these 9.5, they're gonna give me right about there. So I could be okay with that and that way I can at least get two on each one. So what we wanna do is I'm going to bring this guy up. We wanna get rid of this carrot here. So I'm gonna come with this little line like so and we're just gonna bring it up all the way until I don't see it anymore. So this is perfect. So now I'm just gonna center this guy back up like so, just looking at these guys. I wanna still center this so that way when I get a sublimate, it's going to be perfect. So now let's go ahead and try to print this and make sure we're not gonna have any issues around the border. If so, then I may decide to do these individual. To get my last carrot here, which I could have already duplicated this, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. I'm going to hit the duplicate, which I'm actually gonna duplicate a page. So if I duplicated right here is just going to duplicate the design on that same page. I don't want to do that. I want to duplicate another page. So we're going to come up here to this duplicate and it's going to give us another page. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to expand this guy all the way back out. So I'm going to bring this one into right about there. I'm going to drag this guy back up here and I'm going to expand it like so. So that's perfect. So now I have my very last carrot. Same thing, I could go ahead and center that up just like that. So now when I'm ready to go and print, I've got both of those files ready. So we're gonna go back over here to our share. We are going to download and you're gonna see that it says both pages and download. So this is sending it straight over to the computer. Just like before, we're gonna locate those files. So it's gonna come with both of them. We're gonna locate those, I'm ready to go. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm going to drag and drop both of those. I'm actually gonna go ahead and drop this guy down for just a quick second. I'm gonna drop the other one in there as well. So what this is gonna do is it's going to, you see that I have two jobs. So if you come over here to your jobs, which automatically will if you have two or more than that, you're gonna see both of those. So if I click on the jobs, I can look at them, I can see their information and all of that. So these guys are perfectly ready to go. So I'm gonna come over here to my material, choose polyester, and you can see page one of two. So it's gonna print both of these pages at the same time. While we're printing those, let's go ahead and prep up our pillowcase. So one thing that you wanna pay attention to is where's your zipper? So for me, my zipper is on the bottom, so I want that to be at the bottom. And another thing that I actually like to do is put my pressing pillow on the inside. So your Cricut pad or pressing pillow, whatever you're using, I like to put it on the inside. Unless I'm using like a bigger heat press like that, then I'm not worried about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that guy in there, get it nice and centered. So that's going to eliminate all of that bulk and allow us just to get to this top piece. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my heat press, which once again I have at 400 degrees for 60 seconds, and I'm going to smooth everything out. This is going to get rid of those creases for me and allow for a much smoother, um, a much smoother press if we will. So it's gonna smooth everything out for us. So you can let that kind of cool down there and then we're gonna take our lint roller here and remove any sort of lint or debris because if that debris is under there or any sort of lint, you're not going to get a good press and you can also end up with these little blue dots and we don't want that. Sadly, I could not get my printer to print the last designs. It definitely was lined up perfectly, but my sawgrass has decided to freeze up on me. I've turned my computer on and off, printer on and off. Sometimes there's that Wi-Fi connection signal and so, I just have to move on. All right, so luckily I printed this out ahead of time. So we're just gonna go with this one right here, but if you definitely want them to be much bigger using a Sawgrass SG500 or maybe even using an Epson printer that can only do the eight and a half by 14, um, definitely check that out. Now you may say, okay, well, if you can put eight and a half by 14 paper, why didn't you do that? Because we still would have been at the same height. All right, so here we go. To find that center, since we've centered ours up, all you have to do is simply fold your page in half, get a crease up there at the top, and this guy is good to go. So we're going to center this guy up right here, which I can use those lines that are still right here. So if I really wanted to, I could even fold this guy right here, just because I can see that crease right here, and I can definitely even center that up even more. Something about like that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna add a piece of tape on each side, just like so. And then we are going to cover it with that parchment paper, 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So we wanna make sure it's nice and centered, and then I'm gonna give it nice, even pressure all the way across for 60 seconds. All right, so we're down to our last second here. We are going to lift this up, move it out of our way, 
remove our parchment paper, and get ready for a big reveal. I'm gonna get a corner here and fill. So cute, I love this design so much. And as you guys can see inside of that bundle, there were so many different ones to choose from. So if you're making these pillows for your couch, you actually have several different designs to choose from as well. Now you could also flip this over and you can sublimate on the other side. So what's really cool is I can do another Easter one over there or the same carrot so that way, whichever way the pillow gets tossed on the couch, or you could do different holidays. So for example, I could do St. Patrick's on the other side, maybe a Halloween one or Christmas. So that way all you have to do is reverse them or simply don't add anything on the other side. So now what we wanna do is remove the uh, Cricut pressing pad here. I'm bring that up so you guys can see a little bit better there. So we have this really fun pillowcase. So you can definitely customize and personalize your very own pillowcase. Once again, think outside of the box, use the SVGs as PNGs as well. You could do so many different things when it comes to sublimating pillows. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take our pillow insert and the tip of this is, so say for example, this was an 18 inch pillow, you wanna get around a 16 inch insert. You wanna leave a little bit. You really don't wanna stuff that too much. That way when you get that karate chop on top of your pillow, it will actually work with you. So you want your pillow insert to be a little bit smaller than your pillowcase. So what I'm gonna do is this one actually has a zipper on it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it at the same zipper. And then what's really cool too is when you make your own pillows, I can actually take this pillow insert and put it into um, another one so I can make these and I can store these in my stuff. So I can put this with my Easter stuff and then use the same pillow insert in another pillow for the 4th of July. So lots of really cool things when you DIY because you know pillows can get quite expensive. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and get this guy in here just like that. We're going to take our zipper here and zip it. And now we have a really fun pillow, but see how we have that for the karate chop? It's gonna allow that when you have that little bit of a smaller um, pillow insert in there. So I think, don't quote me on this, but I believe this was an 18 inch and that was a 16 inch. Um, but there you guys have it. That's how you're gonna get that perfect little karate chop. But check that out. This guy would have costed me, could have costed me like 35 bucks. Have you guys checked out the price of pillows lately? They are crazy. You could definitely DIY your own on a budget. So once again, I have everything that I've used linked down below. You guys let me know in the comments below what projects are you gonna be making for 2023? And which one was your favorite? Did you learn something new today? Today. Definitely let me know all of the details down below. And there you guys have it. There is three sublimation projects that you guys can make for 2023. If you guys have enjoyed this or found inspiration along the way, make sure you guys give us a thumbs up or comment down below. And if you guys are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as that notification bell down below so you guys don't miss any of our crafting tutorials. Bye for now.